<laughs> so awkward. <laughs> I'm Sarah and for the past year I've been sharing my journeys around the world by train, bus and ferry and today I'm heading to Scotland to stay in this luxury cabin in the Highlands and as usual I'm making the journey part of the holiday. So tonight I'm getting the Caledonian sleeper before catching a local train to Oban which turned out to be pretty eventful. I'm going to give you a tour around our room on the sleeper train and the cabin as well as showing what I get up to during my stay there, including the story of what happened when my friend Emma almost didn't make it back from a day out on the loch. So our first train we're getting is the Caledonian Sleeper to Glasgow. And I'll be traveling with my friend Emma, who you may recognize from my Italy trip. And if you're wondering why it's so quiet here, it's because the strikes are on. So usually we'd be able to have access to the first class lounge because we've both got beds on the sleeper, but everything is closed including the lounge. So it's currently about 10 to 10 and boarding starts at 10.30. So we've got a bit of time to kill because we thought we were going to be in the lounge eating macaroons and drinking juice. So... A tiny corridor. A number eight. This is our room. Okay, so this is our home for the night. We got a standard classic room. So in my other video, I got a club room. So if you wanna watch that video, I'll link it somewhere here. So in the standard classic, you don't get that little goodie bag that you get in the club, but you do get this little pouch thing, which is kind of cute, with earplugs, eye mask, and soap. You have basically the same setup that you have in a club room. So a lower bunk, upper bunk, little ladder here each bed comes with two pillows there's two water bottles for us in there a sink a blind oh that's so cool you get a view of a train in there and on the bed we've got the highlander and lowlander room service menu so we got a message before we boarded that they're working a reduced service so there's only drinks and snacks in the restaurant car rather than hot food but if you came on a normal day it should be working with a full menu of hot food also on the sink here you've got the key which is a like a key card room like for a hotel and that's all part of this whole thing of making the caledonian like a hotel on wheels there's towels here a bin here there's a mirror here coat hangers here and behind lovely emma here is a mirror <laughs> if you check out the bed <laughs> so awkward <laughs> Me. And each bed has its own set of panels, so there's a temperature control, a light, volume control, I think, and a USB cable plug. And the plugs are down here. And there's a host call button. I do really like the design of the Caledonian sleeper. You've got this like tartan fabric here, which is a really nice touch. And in the standard classic room, you don't have your own toilet, so I'll show you the toilet in a bit, which is just at the end of the corridor. And after that, we'll show you the restaurant car. That's the accessible room, and that is the Caledonian double. There's a double bed in there. Here's the so we'll yes. move the all day. Thank you. Oh, that's so cute. Came with a shortbread. She's getting Emma a shortbread too. So nice. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> it's Scottish. <laughs> Butter shortbread brown. <laughs> Very legit. Is it red?
Okay, so we've arrived in Glasgow. I didn't get much sleep. It wasn't because the beds weren't comfortable or anything. I just had a lot on my mind, so feeling a bit worse for wear. So we're gonna see if the lounge here is open and hopefully we can just chill there for a bit, maybe have a little nap before going out to explore Glasgow and find somewhere for breakfast. Right now we're on our way to Glasgow Queen Street Station. So I thought that it was from Glasgow Central, but we just checked and it's from Queen Street. So it's just a 10 minute walk away from here. And then we're gonna hop on the train to Oban. We're at Glasgow Queen Street now and there's been a cancellation of our train. So we basically have to get another train to Dumbarton Central change and then get another train to Oban. Apparently it's because of bad weather. So <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't sound very reassuring. <laughs> So apparently it's a really easy change at Dunbarton Central, so we should be arriving there in 20 minutes. So it's just a half an hour train, but yeah, not too bad of a delay. Okay, so we've made it on to the second train now. It was a bit chaotic because the train, I think, splits up. So this train's two and a half hours now, so we should arrive in Oban at 3.30. Then we're well, gonna catch a taxi. They just told us a minute ago that they changed it. The guy in the front said that this actually was Fort Williams. Well, no deals. So there's a bit of confusion. Some of the carriages go to Fort William and some go to Oban, but there's a few people in this carriage who are going to Fort William and some going to Oban, so. We're not quite sure if we're in the right carriage or not. Splits at Korean lag, so apparently we've got quite a, a long time before we get there, so we can chill. <laughs> oh, it's a crack pop. Oh no. Can you tell us what's happening, Emma? What's Someone's happening? Someone's being arrested. Someone's and escorted off the train. Glean so far is that he picked up a fire extinguisher. <laughs> he was aiming at people. Stop! He just was spraying people. Or like that's trying what to hit them. Said. I don't know. He was like, he's like "Have to move." No, no, I get going. Oh my god. Going to the front of the train because it's splitting off in two different directions and we were at the wrong end. Of course we were at the wrong end. The mystery is solved, we were at the wrong end. So we're being held here now at Helen's Bra Upper, but we have no idea when we're gonna start going again because of the incident with the man who tried to use a fire extinguisher to attack the train conductor. And the conductor is fine. Oh yeah, he's fine. He told us. He said he was, what did he say? I mean, I think he was just kind of like, yeah, he's arrested now. The guy was an idiot. <laughs> but he didn't, I was like, oh, did he have like, did he not have a ticket? I thought that might be the start of the drama and he said no. For a fight. Looking for a fight. So, which is weird because he was really calm when he got arrested. Yeah, he, it was very, we didn't expect him to be arrested. I thought he was explaining a problem that he had. <laughs> yeah, he didn't look like he was about to That's what it looked like. And then the handcuffs came out and it was all over. But it's not all over because we're still here, so. It's, it's not all over and we're all being held on the platform. But look at the foliage. Yeah, the foliage. We're very, very keen on this. Yeah, I mean, we're very keen on the foliage. We're, I'm quite happy. I feel very calm. I'm on a train. I'm happy. I've been this, this a piece for about six months. I haven't felt this calm 
I feel great. That's <laughs> trying to be. Okay, so it's the next morning now. It was a sort of mini storm when we arrived, so I thought it'd be better to film the cabin when it wasn't raining. Also, we just had a really chaotic taxi ride. We had an actual conspiracy theorist taxi driver. So, yeah, that was weird. So this is the cabin. It's technically actually called a bothy. If you don't know what a bothy is, it's basically a sort of building where you can sleep when you're camping. As you can see, and as you will see, it has a lot more than a usual bothy would have. So we got this for Emma's birthday. Yeah, that's why it's so nice. So let's go inside. I'm gonna take off my shoes because it's such a small space gets dirty very quickly. Got coats here, all of our shoes down here. And you've got a really nice little sofa here. See, it's decorated so nicely with pictures on the wall and lime wash paint. We've got our fire, which also doubles up as a stove here, so we're heating up some water to have a shower outside in a bit. So I'll show you that. We've got our wood over here. So this is still sort of the living room. There's another chair here. And then we're immediately into the dining room. So for the dining room, we've got a bench here, which lifts up um, and has board games, hot water bottles, first aid kit in there. Whoops. And then this is the kitchen. So the stay here includes breakfast. So we've got muesli, oats, coffee beans, all the basic utensils you need. Marmalade, which I think was made here, which is pretty cool. Bread, the bread, and also a lot of the food that you'll get has been made on site or sourced locally. So we met a really lovely guy who lives on site and um, he makes a lot of the stuff like the bread. Um, I think he's actually like a chef of some sort. Utensils all down there, pots and pans down there. And they've got body wash and soap up here. They've left us some books, which is really sweet. But these are towels for outside. And then the water is basically in this really big jug here. And then we fill it up outside. We just have to be really efficient with our water. So this is the bedroom. We've got really nice bed sheets on it. And we've got two big towels here for when we shower here. And then there's little mats over here for us to put our stuff, a light here, plugs here. Again, some like nice lime wash paint. And it stays really warm throughout the night, so obviously heat rises. So it's a lot warmer up here than it is down there. We just had a couple fires going last night and then we went to bed and literally this morning it was still absolutely fine in here. So must be very well insulated. So as soon as we got in here last night, we just felt so much more relaxed. You're really supposed to feel in and amongst nature here. They've got a window on each wall of the bothy. You don't get the opportunity to be so immersed in nature that often. And I think this is an incredibly special place to do it because obviously it's lovely inside. The architecture is... Also, you can order food ahead. So we've ordered pizzas and some veg and some other basics, which are all in a sort of ice box outside. And again, loads of the stuff is sourced locally or made on site by that lovely guy we met last night. I'm going to leave it here for the tour, but I will be taking you along with us for some of the activities we're going to do here, like swimming in the lock. I think they've got paddle boards, kayaks. I'm gonna go for some nice walks. I forgot to show you the toilet. It's just here. There's obviously a composting toilet. You've got everything you need, toilet paper. It doesn't smell, those of you who might be wondering. It just smells like wood when you're in there. There's antiseptic gel there. 
We've got oat milk. Lots of provisions for the pizza, so it's deconstructed. Salad, mushrooms, mozzarella, beans, vegan mozzarella. Got some pesto, got butter. This is their pizza dough. Spring onions. Oh, runner beans. I didn't see those last night. <laughs> so we went on the paddle boards up, like right across the log um, to this amazing bit of land which had softest grass I've ever walked on. It was amazing. A bubbling brook. So when we went out, it was sunny, it was glorious. But then when we were about to come back, it got quite stormy. So I went ahead and then I looked back when I was like a third of the way across and she was behind me but just going a bit slower and then I continued and then I look back, look back again halfway across and it was a bit, looked like she'd gone back. So I was like very cold at this point so I continued because I was like I am going to get, I'm going to lose one of my toes. You said like oh maybe we should wait a bit so I thought that you just done that. It's a fair assumption. It's a fair assumption. <laughs> so I was like, but if that's not the case, I'll warm up my toes for five minutes, and if she still's not, if she still hasn't come, then I'll go out and get her. So I went into the sauna, and looking at her the whole time she was standing there. She said she wasn't cold when I left her, so I was like, okay, she must be fine. And then I didn't look at her for like a minute. I looked back. And I couldn't see her anymore. I could see the paddleboard, but I couldn't see you. <laughs> so stressful. I was like, oh my God, she's tried to swim and she's drowned. <laughs> oh my God, she slipped on the soft grass, <laughs> smashed her head on something hard that was concealed by the soft grass and drowned. Slid yeah, into the like, lock. Slid into the lock. <laughs> and then when I was almost there, she poked her head out from under the paddleboard she'd been hiding there the whole time and was like waving at me. I was like, oh, okay, she's fine. But as I was coming out, I'd heard a bang. I didn't really think much of it, but when I was trying to paddle, if I went one way with the paddle, it was like spinning me all the way around. I wasn't going forward at all. I was just kind of spinning and drifting with the water. And I thought, this is so difficult. I'm just not going anywhere. I'm not going forwards. I'm just flailing from side to side. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, that bang was that thing breaking. And then I realized that I might actually not make it back there. Like I might get like washed down with the current. So I was like panicking. I just put all of my like primal strength into like frantically like, yeah, thank God. I just about made it back to the shore. I had like a paranoia that you'd gone in the sauna and just somehow not noticed. But no. I was like, no, she's probably like run off. She's freaked out. She's like, Wah! she's running through the foliage. Well, trying to find the nice man here <laughs> um, who's been helping us. And but I, thought, I was in no state to be rescuing before I got in the sauna because I was freezing cold. I was shivering. One of the toes in particular. <laughs> was I couldn't feel. I mean, I was genuinely worried that I was going to lose it. You know, save your own life and then help others. So I was trying to do that. Anyway, it was a good strategy because I did come and save It's not me. bad strategy. So it worked. So your fourth tiny little toe versus me. <laughs> <laughs> Who will win? <laughs> For Sarah's attention. <laughs> and I was like, is that just Sarah? This was, I thought it was d <laughs> She's a hero. She's, cut, she's taken it upon herself. Oh. Once she's posted her little toesy toe. <laughs> To go and rescue me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I made the right call. There was a few moments where I was like, oh my fucking god, I've literally warmed my feet up while my friend was drowning. <laughs> 
doing all oh this Oh my god, it was this! Please, but I was like stressed, I wasn't chill. I was like, come on, please, like, why didn't the... <laughs> I was like, speaking to myself, like, oh god. Oh. <laughs> god, we're just drowning. Oh, no. <laughs> so anyway, funny. we're all toasty now, everything's fine, we're having a great time. I'm scared of the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> Smoky pizza. <laughs> Taste test. Cheers. Mmm. I love how smoky it is. Mmm. Fucking banging. Over here, look. It's so cool. It's munching on a leaf. Some beans going, potatoes. Got our barbecue. That's a mushroom. Washing the veg. Yeah. 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 <laughs> podding the beans. Or depodding podding the beans. Depodding. Depodding. But look at the colour. They're pink. What the hell? So nice. Morning, it's 9am on our third day at the little cabin in Scotland. Today we're gonna head to Edinburgh, but before that we're gonna have some breakfast, some tea, I've got the fire going, and checkout isn't until 10.30, so we've got a little bit of time to chill. Thanks so much for coming along with us on this journey, and I hope you enjoy the next one where we'll be exploring Edinburgh and taking the Lumo train, so the fast train from Edinburgh down to London. But otherwise, I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.